Hey guys, it's me, Jim. And, uh, um, sorry, that was like on fire. Uh, I am recording a video on the divine masculine because I think that it's really ignored and overlooked. And, uh, I think it's obviously because a lot of us have had really negative experiences with masculinity. And I think most of us don't even understand what masculinity is. Um, I think like femininity, masculinity is an evolution. I think it's a work in progress. I think it's constantly changing and evolving. It's constantly, uh, it's constantly moving its address. It's hard to pinpoint because what is masculinity and femininity? It's whatever our culture tells us it is. So from a Western standpoint, um, specifically a Southern American uh, standpoint, um, which is my, my coming up in viewpoint from the world, masculinity is a lot of negativity. Masculinity is uh, equated with hate. A lot of the time, and I know that's not just me, that's a lot of people, um, but in my area at least. I always try to speak from my southern perspective at least, you know, because that's all I can do. But um, it's equated with negativity, um, hate, small mindedness, masculinity is associated with bullying, uh, that's probably number one for me, homophobia, misogyny, uh, to be a man. To channel masculine power is is to be destructive, not receptive, not healing, destructive. It is to be bossy and egotistical. It is to be rude and loud uh, and aggressive, you know? To be a bigot, to be a hypocrite, uh, to be immature. That's what I was taught masculinity was. That's what I t was told that men were. So, and that's what I experienced as well. So it's not like I was told one thing and then experienced that men were a different thing. No, what I was told at home uh, by my mother was exactly the same thing that I experienced in my own life as a child. Um, and that was really hard because uh, I mean, you know, growing up as a male and not fitting in from the beginning. I was a very feminine child. Uh, I experienced all the dark sides of masculinity. And I've spoken before that I didn't have a father. Um, I still don't have a father figure. I've never met my father. Uh, my mom never remarried. So, and she never dated. So I never had a masculine influence. I didn't really have a present grandfather um, or brother, or anything like that, which is sad because I have both of those, but uh, they weren't present in my life. So I was raised exclusively by women and nurtured by feminine energy, but I was also hurt by feminine energy. So you would think that maybe I would turn to masculinity as a coping device, as some place to hide, but I felt rejected there too, so I really had nowhere to go. Um, but I knew that I was a feminine soul, a feminine spirit, and somehow I, I, I kept on to that, to that truth. So, which I think most of us have had good, fairly good experiences with femininity, with feminine people, be them women or not. And of course, when you get to the pagan path, whenever you found it, you immediately realized that was such a woman-centric path, right? A female-centric path, a feminine-powered centric path. It's very goddess-oriented. Many of the paths are, almost all of them, uh, at least in their form as they exist now. So I think we need that, right? We need that moment of expression in femininity, in feminine power, in attributing male qualities to the feminine power like women can be destructive and aggressive and strong right we need to learn that that your feminine power your feminine self because we all have one uh, can be that 
without having to be masculine, right? Um, but I think once you get past that point of, like, revolution and, like, evolution in yourself where you're like, yes, my female power, my woman self is, like, on fire. I think once you come through that, which I think for most of us happens a few years in, you kind of start searching for that male power and you can kind of find that it's absent in books and media in things that we have to grab onto outside of our of our own pagan perspective. It's not written on a lot, and there's a few books here and there, but I just never connected to them. I'm assuming that a lot of people didn't either because they don't really make that many of them. I feel like if there was quality work out there, then the public, pub, uh, the publishers would have built on that. But I think that the attempts that have been put out just are a little subpar. Um, and I think that's extremely detrimental to the pagan community because as I've spoken before, the pagan community, I think at this point is almost exclusively full of a bunch of solitaries <laughs> and um, we need stuff outside of ourselves a lot of the time uh, to help grow ourselves, right? At least we think we do. But I mean, sometimes you do. You need to take in new ideas and new visions and new art forms. And sadly, in the masculine perspective, in the pagan masculine perspective, it's not there. Um, there's even very few of us on YouTube that are males um, that are uh, giving our voices. And when there are, most of us are gay. Most of us are very feminine. So uh, there's not really like a hyper-masculine, which should there be? I don't know. But there's not really a God-centered paganism present anywhere, to me, that I have found. That is credible. But I don't mean that in a shady way, but it is what it is. Uh, I think most of us, you know, we all talk about our matrons and like our guides and they're always like women and goddesses. And we love channeling that goddess energy, building up our goddess confidence. And that's important. Uh, that's very important. But we know as pagans that all things come in a balance and we need that masculine power but we've been hurt by it. We don't know how to heal ourselves from it. We don't know how to even begin the journey of healing our wounded masculine selves and masculine perspectives. And I think a lot of the gods, sometimes they're uh, depicted as so macho that I know it turns me off. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to work with you. You seem like a jock. Like, no, thank you. You seem like the kind of people that hurt me in my life. Why would I want to work with a god like that? And I think, like goddesses, there are very select few that get given the spotlight in paganism today, and that's a shame. And I think it's the same way with gods. You just get a couple, like those hyper-masculine macho guys most of the time, that get shown, and the hyper-feminine girls get shown. You don't really get many masculine women and feminine men, uh, or, you know, in paganism, like god-wise. You have to dig deeper with yourself to do that, and... Some people, we, we, it's hard to do that because it's hard to do things on your own without being told, without being shown, without the answers being given to you. It's hard to get the drive to keep searching and digging deeper, you know, to find gods like that and teachings and lessons and things. So I think what I'm trying to get at here is maybe take another look at your masculine self. Maybe go visit him. Have an astral journey. Call on your masculine self. Do a tarot reading. An oracle reading. Something. Write a story. Call on your masculine self and see what he has to say. It might not be anything positive because we've neglected them for so long. Or because they've... Uh, we perceive them in a negative way, like the way I mentioned before. The way that we've seen men. So maybe that's how we see our male self as some womanizer or homophobic person. Uh, but call on your masculine self. Call on him. See what he has to say. Work with him. Heal him. It's like, you know, we talk a lot about healing our inner child. Heal your inner man. Why not? Heal your inner man. Go visit the man inside of you. Talk to him. Listen to him. Heal him if he needs to be healed. Give him voice if he needs to be given voice. Give him expression in this external shell, in this external world. You give it to your feminine self, I guarantee you, you do. Whoever's watching this, you probably all do. We all celebrate our feminine self. Celebrate your masculine self. 
redefine what the word masculine means to you. What does man mean to you? What does masculine mean to you? What does God, not goddess, God mean to you? Who is your God? Do you have a God? Do you have many gods? Do you have any male spirits? Do you have any male deities, like, you know, entities, power animals? Do you perceive your power animal as male? You know, explore these things. Um, explore masculinity. And through that, explore yourself. Redefine yourself. Expand the definition of who you are through your masculinity, through your masculine journey. Um, I'll probably talk about this more in depth uh, soon, I would think, since it's really on my mind. But, uh, yeah, redefine masculinity and channel it. Embrace it. It's a part of you. And if you truly want to be a balanced pagan, if you truly believe in balance, masculinity is a part of that. So, go out and search for masculinity, you guys. I just realized that I talked deeply, like that I normally do in this entire video. I guess it's because I'm channeling my masculinity. <laughs> um, namaste. And Ashe. Peace out, Girl Scouts.